Okay, let's turn Jude verse 3. Jude. The epistle of Jude verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Amen. Ye should honestly contend for the faith. Okay. The, if we just enjoy the faith, it will not bring to final destination, bring to, bring us a final destination to reach the final destination. We have to fight. He should honestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Remember this? In the Christian history, fundamentalists, they were fighting. They were uh, fighting against the modernist and all the errors in the church history. So remember, Reformation. Uh, the, not Luther, we are following Calvin. So we are using the theological term Calvinism or Reform Theology. Uh, John Knox, he learned from Calvin all the Presbyterian policy. He brought the Reform Theology to, into Scotland. He reformed the nation. So he established Presbyterian Church in Scotland and Presbyterian Church in Northern Ireland. Uh, some Presbyterian uh, church member, they immigrate to Northern Ireland. Later, the Presbyterians in Scotland, Presbyterians in Northern Ireland, they came to uh, America and they formed uh, Presbyterian Church in America. Presbyterian Church in USA, PCUSA. A denomination, PCUSA, had a Bible college, theological seminary, Princeton Theological Seminary, and also they had a mission agent, uh, board of Presbyterian foreign mission. But denomination, PCUSA, uh, Bible College, Bi uh, Theological Seminary, uh, Princeton Theological Seminary, and um, the Board of Presbyterian for Mission all were controlled uh, by modernists. So, Dr. J. Gresham Machen, he came out from this denomination, from this Bible, uh, theological seminary, from this mission agency. He established a new denomination, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, and uh, theological seminary, Westminster Theological Seminary, and Independent Board of Presbyterian Foreign Mission. He established these three institutions for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, 1937, Carl McIntyre, he separated from OPC, uh, Orthodox Presbyterian Church, and he established a new denomination, Bible Presbyterian Church. Also, he established Faith Theological Seminary for the denomination and he was serving as a president of Independent Board of Presbyterian Foreign Missions. But now uh, the Independent Board of po uh, Presbyterian Foreign Missions, uh, they want to return back 
to Orthodox Church, IBPFM. So see the website of IBPFM. You cannot find any word about uh, Carl McIntyre, nor his footstep in history. But uh, Carl McIntyre, he was very, very important man in IBPFM. Why the people in IBPFM, they delete all the first step and name of Carl McIntyre. They doesn't want to have any relationship with that Carl McIntyre. They just mention the founder, the Dr. Gresham Machen. They deny all the spirit BPC and uh, faith theological seminary and IBP FM. So this is the spiritual condition of IBP FM today. The so result of the conflict in OPC, um, the independent board for Presbyterian for remissions, uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre, he was the key man of this IBP FM. And also he established one denomination, the Bible Presbyterian Church. Uh, three principles, three differences uh, from the Orthodox Presbyterian Church. First of all, the eschatological view, the premillennialism and IBPFM and uh, thought the The smoking and drinking, strongly against smoking and drinking. This is the characters of Bible Presbyterian Church. And also they need a faith, uh, theological seminary, so they establish it, the faith theological seminary. So three things. IBPFM and Bible Presbyterian Church, BP Church, and faith theological seminary. The independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions, the fundamentally took over the independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions. The independent board for Presbyterian foreign missions became more fundamental and has stood for premillennialism. Uh, Carl McIntyre said, the independent board for Presbyterian Foreign Mission has continued independent and has become one of the great missionary agencies of the 20th century. Its leadership has had an active part and been in constant uh, participation in the ongoing developments as they are related to the unfolding of the struggle throughout the whole world. So, uh, the work, through the work of the IBP FM, uh, the Bible College of East Africa was established. Uh, 50 years ago, now the Bible College of East Africa is serving to train God's servant for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now the IBPFM has no power to support the mission work as minimized, getting smaller and smaller, now no power to support mission work. So now the Bible College of East Africa uh, is almost independent uh, financially. Right? Uh, Reverend Mark Kim, the principal of Bible College of East Africa, Kenya and uh, Rwanda, he is uh, making the fund to run the Bible college, not by IBPFM. 
Also, Bible College of East Africa, Tanzania was supported by True Life BB Church. All independent, almost. I remember this. Uh, no American missionaries. So now in Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, uh, all the Korean missionaries and the Singapore missionaries, the James, brother James and his wife, Shaman, is serving in Kenya campus. Now I'm serving Tanzania campus and uh, Reverend Mark Kim's daughter is serving in Rwanda campus. Uh, actually, in Tanzania, we have two Korean missionaries. But one missionary, Reverend Kim Nam Jung, he is retired permanently because the visa problem. Now, Tanzanian government do not want to give work permit to missionary. And he, now, the, this pandemic situation, uh, of coronavirus, uh, he cannot work anymore, so he retired, uh, permanently. Uh, my plan is bring my wife to Tanzania. I'm not sure. I'm just seeking uh, the will of God. But we need more faithful servant of God's word. Let's work together for missions to save souls. The BP spirit uh, now is burning in Singapore, also in Africa. We have to walk for the Lord without ceasing. We have to pray for African mission, also come and serve the Lord. The Lord will bless you and use you mightily. Uh, the Bible Presbyterian Synod, on the evening of June 4th, in uh, 1937, a small but prayerful group of men met in one of the assembly rooms of the St. James Hotel in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. After much waiting on the Lord and earnest uh, conference together, those present formed themselves into the Bible Presbyterian Synod. Okay, the Bible Presbyterian Church uh, in USA, PCUSA, and Orthodox Presbyterian Church, but now Bible Presbyterian Synod, Bible Presbyterian Church. This is this name of the denomination show us the character of Bible Presbyterian Church. First of all, the Bible is the first place in our faith, in our activity. I remember this. Bible is everything. And we also respect our tradition of faith, a uh, Presbyterianism. The Westminster Confession of Faith, uh, Westminster Shorter Catechism, Larger Catechism. This is the Bible Presbyterian Church. Don't forget the name Bible Presbyterian Church. We are uh, serving the Lord for the Word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Remember this. The Bible Presbyterian Church was found in uh, 1937. Uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre said, the Bible Presbyterian Church stands in the line of succession of the great witness of Presbyterianism in America. The Bible Presbyterian Church is a missionary church. The Bible Presbyterian Church is a militant church in the defense of the faith. The Bible Presbyterian Church is a Bible preaching and evangelistic church. The Bible Presbyterian Church is a confessional church. It accepts the historic Westminster Confession of Faith and the larger and shorter catechisms. 
This is the Bible Presbyterian Church by the founder, Dr. Carl McIntyre. So always remember what Bible Presbyterian Church is in the beginning. Now, some Bible Presbyterian Church, some Bible Presbyterian pastors, they depart from these traditions. It is not Bible Presbyterian Church anymore, even though they had the name of Bible Presbyterian Church. The most important thing is not just the name, the, the contents, the spirit is more important. So don't forget why Bible Presbyterian Church was established by some faithful servant of God. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The Carl McIntyre said the testimony of Jesus Christ is the church of Christ. Let's see, Faith Theological Seminary. The founders of the Bible Presbyterian Church realized that the principal source of the apostles of many old line denominations was the defection of the theological seminaries. The theological seminaries, the professors, they brought all false doctrine into the Bible college, into the theological seminary, it fallen down, and it will later the Bible college and seminary destroy their own denominations. So, but the Princeton theological theological seminary was the opposite way. The denomination was controlled by modernists and denomination destroyed uh, Princeton Theological Seminary. Anyway, the church, the denomination, and the theological seminary must work together. So, they was thinking it is not enough just have the new denomination. They realized they need a Bible college, the theological seminary also. So consequently, they took part with others in the forming a new seminary which should stand four square for the word of God. Thus was found the Faith Theological Seminary, an institution which seeks to combine the higher scholarship with constant emphasis on vital spiritual life. Usually, Bible college has uh, the bachelor's degree, but seminary has a master's degree, the, especially the MD degree, Master of Divinity. This is a theological seminary. Okay. The seminary began with 25 or 26 students, all of whom were college, college graduates, uh, in the summer of 1937, men of God, led by Dr. Carl McIntyre, formed a new seminary which should be honoring to the Lord in his doctrine and position. A witness to the faith once for all delivered to the saints, ever exalting the infallible word of God as the only rule of faith and practice. This word comes from Westminster Shorter Catechism number 2 and the Bible Jude verse 3. Uh, remember, this is the reason establishing uh, the Faith Theological Seminary. They want to still fighting against the modernist. Modernism, liberalism, false doctrine. And also they want to keep good traditions. They were, they are believing infallible word of God 
and as the only rule of faith and practice, they had the loyalty to the Westminster Confessional Faith and larger and shorter catechisms. A faith theological seminary is independent and not under the ecclesiastical control of any denomination. This is the same tradition with the Westminster Theological Seminary. They don't want to follow the uh, destruction of the Princeton Theological Seminary. Of course, they can work with good church, good denomination, but they never trust the church, never trust any man, never trust any denomination. Okay? So like a PC USA can destroy the seminary. Now in Korea, we start the good denomination with the Bible college, but uh, most of the Bible college under the control of denomination. But gradually, denomination, they accept the new evangelical uh, the doctrines, mind of concept, and even the criticism, the, doc, uh, the theology of modernists, uh, gradually they falling down. And now the, some Bible culture, they gave up the tradition of Presbyterianism, the Reformed theology. They accept uh, the new perspective on Paul, like this. All the new doctrines comes in the Bible college. The church, the denomination, can destroy the Bible college. So Bible college must have perfect freedom from the control of denomination or from any uh, institution outside of the college. Okay? So pray for the board of directors and pray for the faculty of Firestone Bible College. Uh, it presents the great system of doctrines set forth in the historic Westminster Confession of Faith and Catechisms. It is closely identified with the American Council of Christian Churches and the worldwide testimony of the International Council of Christian Churches. These two institutions by Carl McIntyre was working together with the Bible Presbyterian Church and the Faith Theological Seminary. Uh, Carl McIntyre had uh, three enemies in his whole life. Of course, he was fighting against the modernists continually. But modernists, they uh, walk uh, beyond the boundary of nation. They, they made the world a uh, wide uh, relationship uh, through WCC, World Council of Churches. This is a uh, ecumenical um, movement by liberals. So he uh, established one agent, one organization called International Council of Christian Churches against WCC. The second enemy was uh, communism. That time, in the time of uh, J. Gresham Machen or the others, that time no communism around the world. But uh, in the day of Carl McIntyre, the communism they walked and they destroyed Christian faith. So Carl McIntyre, he against communism strongly. The third enemy was a new evangelicalism. 
the evangelical old evangelicalism uh, was the same term for reformed theology or presbyterian theology and calvinistic theology but uh, we uh, can see here new evangelicalism what is new in theology is uh, different and is uh, even this is the uh, heretical okay so let's see the ICCC and WCC. The fundamentalist and modernist controversy has been extended beyond the United States of America. The fundamentalist has established the International Council of Christian Churches, ICCC, leading by Carl McIntyre. The modernists, they established the World Council of Churches. Of course, ICCC was supported by conserv conservative Christians, fundamental Christians around the world. And WCC was supported by modernists. Uh, they also welcomed the other religions, Muslims and Buddhists, Confuciusness, even Roman Catholics. This is the, we call ecumenism. The WCC always work with ecumenical churches. The International Council of Christian Churches was established in Amsterdam, August 11 to 19, 1948. It has carried on theme for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The word is the Bible, the testimony is His church. Uh, this is the word by Dr. Carl McIntyre, founder of this organization, uh, International Council of Christian Churches. The World Council of Churches was founded in Amsterdam after the ICCC, August 24 to September 4, 1948. They selected an ecumenical ship as their emblem. So this uh, WCC always uh, express their ecumenism. And now some the denomination they joined in uh, WCC. In Korea, one, uh, one of the uh, largest denomination, also Presbyterian Church, uh, this is one part. Okay, this the uh, some liberal party. Uh, we call this Tonghap. Okay, Tonghap means the unity or something. Blah blah blah. And uh, this denomination support the WCC. So few years ago, the WCC World Conference was uh, held was in the Busan, the second city of in Korea, very famous. But now it's very sad, no one say about and no one say against WCC that time in Korea. Even the that time the president of ICCC was Korean but even he didn't say anything. Okay, this is very sad. But WCC, they are still walking around the world. So in Africa also, some pastors ask uh, me, can we join uh, WCC? So I send the uh, pastor Judah and explain uh, what WCC is and introduce them the ICCC and teach them the history of fundamentalism. So we have to discern what is the WCC, what is the ICCC. 
the WCC World Council of Churches received into its membership all manner of church groups, including modernist, evangelical, Unitarian, Greek Orthodox, and communist controlled church. Actually, the, under the communism, there is no freedom of religion. So, the, some communist country, they allow some church. Actually, this church was controlled by communists. There is, actually, there is no gospel. So now, you know, the, in China, the official church, this actually the, some genuine Christian, they are not agree with the official church in China. Okay, this, this is controlled by, uh, communist. Also in North Korea, communist country, uh, in Pyongyang, there is a church, a uh, Bongsu church, but we do not believe this church is genuine church. Okay? But the WCC, they welcome all the churches. The ISIS, International Council of Christian Church, accepted into its membership only such bodies as maintain the purity and integrity of their confessions and which are thoroughly evangelical and protestant. This is the ICCC, International Christian Council of Christian Churches. Uh, Reverend Dr. To, he was uh, president of FECCC, Far Eastern Council of Christian Churches, one regional uh, department of ICCC. So he visited uh, Korea, that time, my father-in-law, he served uh, as a interpreter for him. So he, the Reverend Timothy To, first time I came to came to FABC, I talked uh, with him about uh, Christianity in Far East, and he remembers. And he was very happy because he remember uh, my father-in-law. Okay. So it's a good memory for him, also for me. Now I am uh, one of the graduates of Firestone Bible College. I have the same spirit with Reverend Dr. Timothy To. What is the same spirit? This is spirit of Bible Presbyterian Church. Fundamental spirit. The WCC World Council of Churches called itself the ecumenical movement and was seeking to build an ecumenical church which ultimately will embrace all churches including the Roman Catholic Church. The ICCC present what is called the 20th century reformation movement and is seeking to depend the historic Christian faith from all the attacks being made upon it by the modernists, the neo-orthodox, the new evangelicals, and those who join in fellowship with that which the word of God forbids. So we love the International Council of Christian Churches, they were fighting against all the modernism and all the false doctrines around the world. The WCC received into its membership all manner of church groups. Uh, uh, yeah, we already told uh, this. Uh, but the WCC, not even uh, in the name of Christianity, they also accept all the other religion. Okay, Muslims, uh, communist, and Buddhist, uh, Confucianists today. Okay, all the religion. 
There's something wrong. But the uh, ICCC always focus on traditional Christianity, the religion from the Bible, religion in the Bible. They want to depend on this. Communism. Dr. Carl McIntyre hated Marxism. Marxism takes its name from Karl Marx. Christianity takes its name from Jesus Christ. Christianity uh, comes from Christ. We call ourselves Christian. Okay? In Marxism, there is no God. Man has no soul. In the two systems, the Marxism and Christianity, there is no overlapping, no corresponding, and they cannot possibly be equated. They are diametrically opposed to each other. If someone said the Christian can cooperate with the communist is nonsense. We believe in God, but Marxism, communism believe in nothing. So the this is experience in the in history of my own nation, uh, Korea. Uh, the communist. Uh, they occupy the North Korea. Uh, they killed a lot of Christians and pastors. They never allowed the freedom of worship. Now, of course, they officially they said we have the church, but this is not genuine church. This is uh, controlled by communists. All the genuine Christians, they uh, were casting in jail. No freedom. They were killed. How about uh, Cambodia? They also killed all the Christians. Okay, this is the communism. They knew they cannot live together with Christians. Christians, they are believing in God. They are not worshiping any other gods. Okay? But the communism, no God, no soul. So we cannot with, work with uh, communism. This is nonsense. Okay? Uh, Carl McIntyre continually said, the Christianity which will not resist communism is apostate. Very strong word. The Christian is and must be the most valiant warrior against god godliness, communism in the 20th century. Those who say don't fight communism but preach the gospel are spiritually blinded. For without liberty, the gospel cannot be preached. So let's see the communist country now. Of course, they accept the capitalism for their economy, but spiritually, what is the, their policy for religion? The North Korea and China. Is there really the freedom of religion? No. Persecution. A lot of my friend, missionary friend in China, they cannot return back to China. The China, they destroy the church. How about North Korea? Until today, communists never allow the Christianity. Uh, Carl McIntyre said, the communism is an attack upon God. 
Number two, communism denies Jesus Christ as presented in the Bible. Number three, communism is the work of the devil. So they hate Christians so much. Persecution and martyrdom. And the, during civil war in my country, uh, a lot of Christians and pastors were killed by communists. In my Bible college in Korea, the professors, teachers, they was using the word of North Korea. They never changed their word. So we knew they speaking something. We knew, we recognized uh, he came from North Korea. They came down to South Korea, escaping from the persecution. They were all Christians, leader of the church, but they couldn't survive in North Korea. They came down to South Korea. It was good for me. I learned the faithful uh, doctrines, but it is it was a disaster for North Koreans. No more Christian leader, no more church, no more Christians. Okay? Communism is the work of the devil. And communism denies that man has a soul. Number five, communism offers a socialist world kingdom. Number six, Communism is a system of total slavery. Uh, Christian country has uh, freedom to worship the Lord and freedom of everything if they keep the law of government. But the uh, communist country has no freedom actually. It's slavery. Communism forbid the carrying out of the Great Commission. So now they are not allowed to missionary to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You cannot uh, return back to, uh, cannot come into North Korea and you cannot come into China now. Now, uh, Tanzania. Now, Tanzania government want to change the national system from socialist country to communist country. So they do not allow the missionary to walk to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know why. The communist country, they hate the Great Commission. So now all the Korean missionary visa is rejected by government. Now I am trying to get the work permit for my wife. I applied, but no news. If you have some mind for the mission, pray for Mrs. Park's uh, work permission in Tanzania. But I'm not sure. But if we should get the uh, work permit from Tanzanian government, how many years she can serve, we don't know. Only Tanzanian government allow the missionary the maximum five years. But uh, just first apply, they reject. The, after two years apply, they can also reject. So nobody knows. This is the communist country. Eight, the uh, communism has murdered millions of Christians, churches. Okay? So this, uh, if you want to see the history of persecutions, the quite the big number was killed uh, by Roman Catholic Church. Not by Muslim, okay? Roman Catholic Church, and the quite big number persecuted 
martyred by communist. Okay? The communism is using the churches in means uh, under control by communists, uh, like uh, for example the Soviet Union, all the churches they just had the name was used by communists. No gospel preaching, no teaching the Bible. Even they was teaching all the doctrine of communism on the pulpit. The youth, they was used the church. The communism is a total enemy of freedom. No freedom in communi communist country. Uh, Eleven, communism is concentrating its program upon the youth. They want to destroy the youth. Okay? Uh, they are educating the youth with uh, Marxism. So the, this kind of youth, they are departing from the, all the teaching from the Bible. They have the loyalty to communism. Okay? Communists are Concentrating their attack upon the United States is Constitution and Bill of Rights. What's this? The United States, they had uh, religious freedom and they want to attack, they want to defend all the freedom of religion. So they were rival, uh, Marxism and Christian, New, Christ, uh, Christianity. And uh, communism and socialism and capitalism. Okay, they were liable. Uh, it's very interesting. The 1950, uh, 25th uh, of June in Korea, the civil war broke. But next day, uh, Carl McIntyre, he said, he wrote the message to the President of United States of America in the name of President of ICCC. He said, please send the, the, the soldiers to save our brethren in Korea. I'm very appreciate the President of the United States of America. He sent the soldiers to save us. Uh, also, uh, by UN, 16 countries, uh, 16 nations, they send the soldiers. But especially, I appreciate to the President of ICCC, Carl McIntyre. He loved fellow Christians who has same faith with him. And communism advocates the peaceful coexistence and a deceptive peace. It's this kind of peace. Uh, like a peace by Antichrist. They say this is peace, peace, not genuine peace. Okay? Number 14, communism's attack all that uh, Christian and Christianity, uh, represent. Okay? So now, uh, by the grace of the Lord, the communist country collapsed down, but still, some countries, they hold fast communism. But uh, their power getting, um, uh, their power minimized today. But someday, the Lord will destroy all the communist systems for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Christianity cannot be with communism. 
Uh, the communism was the enemy of the Carl McIntyre. I believe communism is the enemy of Christianity also. But if any country allow us the freedom of evangelize or worship, we have to obey that government. Okay. But the communist country never allow to worship and evangelize. Carl McIntyre thought that WCC was being using by communist because w, uh, in the in WCC a lot of pastors they came from communist country. But officially, communist country never allowed the genuine servant of God. All the ministers in communist country, they were controlled by communists. But they were working in WCC. So Carl McIntyre thought that WCC was being using, was using, uh, by being used, used by communist. Okay? So it's very important. The WCC has no its executive and central committees clergymen with communist affiliations from communist countries and holding position in communist government whose churches are dominated by the secret police. Uh, Carl Mac, uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre said, uh, WCC was, uh, being used by communists. Nobody believed that. But now, the, all the document, uh, the people, they can read all the record of WCC and the record historical record in communist countries. They said, oh, Carl McIntyre was right. The WCCC was being used by a communist. Okay. The ICCC sees communism in its diabolical Worldwide conspiracy and has sought to expose the use which it is making of religion within the world council of churches. So first enemy of uh, Carl McIntyre was uh, WCC. The second enemy was communism. The third enemy was uh, new evangelicalism. Uh, Dr. Carl McIntyre did practice biblical separation. Under his influence, separatist was known another name of fundamentalist. This fundamentalist is the militant fundamentalist. Separation keeps the church pure and free from false teachers and heresies. The doctrine of separation is a doctrine of preservation. No biblical separation, the church cannot survive. So all the first doctrine, the theology of modernist comes into the church. How can the church survive? So biblical separation is most important doctrine. Uh, keeps the church pure and free from false doctrines. Okay? In order to defend the Christian faith, the Christian must separate himself from all forms of unbelief and apostasy. A true fundamentalist is a true separatist. It was not that everyone agreed with the biblical separation of the fundamentalists. Some conservatives refused biblical separation and militants of the fundamentalists and called themselves evangelicals. 
But this evangelical is something different from Reformed theology, so we call this new evangelical, new evangelicalism. New evangelicalism as uh, defined uh, by its founder, Harold J. Okenga. Uh, the uh, new evangelicalism uh, what's not come out from modernism? The new evangelicalism come out from fundamentalism. Okay? The new evangelicalism breaks with three movements. He said the new evangelicalism breaks first with neo-orthodoxy because it declares that it accept the authority of the Bible. That time, one very famous uh, the new theology, we call this uh, or new orthodox, neo-orthodoxy from Germany, the represented by uh, Karl Barth. Uh, he said, actually, before Karl Barth, uh, the field of theology was dominated by a liberalist and modernist. So Karl said, no, 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 you are all wrong. We have to believe the Bible, especially we have to believe the historicity of the creation and historicity of the Adam. So people said, oh, now we have very orthodox again. But later he said, this, he was a German theologian. He used for history to what? One is the history, another word is Geschichte. Um, history is a normal history as it was. But the Geshite is the history in the other region. The, this is a very subjective historical term. So he said all the history, historicity of creation and historicity of the Adam, the record in Genesis was in, not in the area of history, but in the area of Geshite. So the people said, oh, this is orthodoxy, but not traditional orthodoxy. This is something new orthodoxy. This comes from subjectivism. Okay? This is new orthodoxy. So some uh, concept is different from us. They say the Bible becomes God's word. So we are believing in the Bible is God's word. All the word in the Bible is God's word. But the new orthodox said Bible becomes God's word. Uh, this Bible in the letter, this is not actually God's word. But you are reading the Bible and Holy Spirit touch your heart, open your mind and open your eyes, open your ears, then Bible becomes God's word. This is new orthodoxy. If you are not realized, if you cannot recognize, you cannot understand the Bible, it's not God's word for you. But you know the meaning of the Bible, it becomes God's word. Sound good? But this is not our view. We believe in that the Bible is God's word. New evangelicals, they say Bible contains God's word. Why? They say some Bible has some mistake, errors. So the, it has the geographical errors and historical errors or errors of numbers in Chronicles. So we believe the Bible 
contains God's word. Some part of Bible, yes, it's by God's word, but the other part is not God's word. So they said Bible contains God's word. But someone said Bible is not God's word. Who says? The liberals, modernists. Okay, the four views of the Bible. The our view, traditional, the reform theology view is the Bible is God's word. New orthodoxy, they say Bible becomes God's word. New evangelicals, Bible contains God's word and liberals. Bible is not God's word. But the uh, evangelical said we are better than neo orthodoxy because we declare that we accept the authority of the Bible. What is the authority of the Bible? But actually, and today, uh, from um, the Fuller Theological Seminary, all the news and record, uh, actually they deny the authority of the Bible. They reinterpret it with the uh, evolutionism and also they gave up some fundamental doctrines. Okay. And he breaks with the modernist. However, in reference to his embrace to the full orthodox system of doctrine against which the modernist has accepted. They said, we are better than uh, modernist. Because modernist, they deny all the fundamental doctrines in the Bible, but we accept the orthodox system of doctrine against the modernist. So we are better than modernists. And third, he breaks with the fundamentalists on the fact that he believed that the biblical teaching, the Bible doctrine and ethics must apply to the social sense that there must be an application of this to society as much as there is an application of it to the individual man. Uh, the main centered focus is obvious here. They said, okay, fundamentalism good. We are came up from fundamentalism, fundamental camp. We respect them, but one more. We are better than them because we are always focused on men. We are, we have the view of man centered. And, you must apply your doctrine to the individual man. You have to focus on the society. No isolation, they said. In the neo-evangelical attempt to straddle between two boats, which are heading in the opposite directions. New evangelical hopes to balance the two without falling into the water. This is a very funny situation, you know. The fundament, uh, the modernist, they are going uh, this way. The modernist boat, okay? And the fundamental boat heading this way, opposite way, they are fighting against each other. And middle, the one Leg, one is here, another leg is here. Okay? And they are just, uh, between modernist and fundamentalist. They want to embrace both parties. Is it possible? He must very, very strong than two parties. But in the history said, the new evangelicals, they were failed. Even they lost their identity also. This is a dream. What is fundamentalism? What is modernism? We cannot walk together. How can 
the new evangelical embrace two parties. It's impossible, actually. This comes from the pride of them. A new evangelical is one who befriends both sides. He says he is on the side of fundamentalism and truth when in reality he is on the side of unbelief. How can we embrace the truth and unbelief together? 2 Corinthians and chapter 6 and 7 says it is impossible. We shall separate from the darkness, separate from unbelief, separate from modernist. In the view of the fundamentally, the neo-evangelicalism was a certain compromise. Okay? How can harmonize modernism and fundamentalism? The unbelief and belief. How can harmonize? How can make the unity? How can bring the peace and love from both parties? So it was uh, neo-neutralism, nothing else. They are compromised. The fundamentalist maintains and depends the historic Christian faith, the new evangelical six on accommodation and adjustment of their faith with present day liberalism or modernism. The fundamentalist continue to be what he has always been and he plays loyalty to the word of God and the whole counsel of God above every consideration. The new evangelical is a new name given to an old position, the position of compromise and expediency which has always attended the conflict between the fundamentalists and modernists in its various stages. So this is the mindset. Uh, this is not new actually, not new evangelicals. Uh, in the Christian history, in the history of Presbyterian Church, Presbyterian Church in USA, PC USA, we already had the inclusivist. The doctrinally, theologically, they believed in all the fundamental doctrines, but their mindset, they opened the doors for modernists to come in the church and they destroy the church. They apply this error to modern day. Okay? Well, they say, already said, uh, why not change the world? Did they change the world? No, nothing. They never change for modernist. They were changed by modernist. So they adjust, they compromise their theology and everything. So now new evangelical disappeared. But the mindset of new evangelical still inside everywhere in the church. So if we accept this kind of mindset, we will depart easily from the, all the doctrine, all the teaching from the Bible. Why they always has the open mind and they open the door, gate for the enemy of Jesus Christ. The fundamentalists maintain that there is no middle ground in the battle with apostasy. 
the that obedience is the call demanded of the Bible believer. The new evangelical speaks in what he calls the realm of the gray. And he cooperate and fellowship with the modernist. He refused to cooperate with the fundamentalist. They said we want to have the balance between uh, modernist and fundamentalist. But finally they walk together only with the modernist and they refuse to cooperate with the fundamentalist. The making balance, having balance uh, is failed. Okay, now we have to see uh, BPC, Bible Presbyterian Church in USA. They were descendant of the Carl McIntyre, but I met some pastor from Bible Presbyterian Church in USA. Uh, they hate Carl McIntyre so much. I don't know why. Of course, Carl McIntyre, he was very strong man. He made some mistakes. But, uh, BP pastors in Bible Press, uh, in USA, they, uh, reject the Carl McIntyre and also they reject the spirit of Bible Presbyterian Church. So I ask the pastor, uh, I know you hate Carl McIntyre, you separate, you did separation from Carl McIntyre. You point out all the errors of Carl McIntyre. Uh, now I believe you criticize McIntyre very strongly and you came up from, uh, the camp of McIntyre, I believe you must better than Dr. Carl McIntyre. Are you better than McIntyre? Do you have the spirit of the fundamentalism? Do you have until hold fast, hold fast the spirit of BP Church? He didn't say anything. American BB Church now, they has the only name. This is not old Bible Presbyterian Church in USA. Only name. And they have no power for missions. Uh, very small churches. And they just enjoy their life. We are BP Church, uh, we are very conservative, but no power for missions. No manpower, and also no fund for missions. Okay. So I asked the BP pastor in USA, uh, he is the board member of IBPFM also, I asked him, why the BP Church, IBPFM, never send a missionary to Africa? And he said, oh, today's young men, they are seeking comfortable life. We uh, ask someone, go to missionary to Africa, they had always the questions. Is there air conditioner? Is there refrigerator? They question. They love the comfortable life. Oh yes. But one uh, American young man, he was a theological student, he said, no, 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 you are wrong. Why? He said, why? Uh, I visited Korea. Korean also has the, all the air conditioner and all the refrigerator. But the Korean missionaries never ask, is there a refrigerator or an air conditioner? 
they call from the law, they just go there. This is the difference is between Americans and Koreans. Korean now they are going. They are still uh, want to be a missionary. This is not matter of the environment. This is the matter of the faith. The American boy said. How about the Singaporeans? Why? You not to come mission field. What afraid? Very interesting, right? Uh, the six years ago, I visit the BCEA Kenya for the the alumni conference. I was teaching some subject, and after two weeks, I lived with uh, Reverend Makim. And uh, just few days before returning back to Korea, he asked me, "Please come to Africa." And I said to him, "Okay, let me pray first. This is a usual response, uh, like a Singaporean. Uh, I asked Singaporean, and Singaporean always said to me, "Let me pray first, right?" So I told to, I learned from Singaporeans, so I told to uh, Rebbe Makim, let me pray first. He said, oh, do not pray, please. So it's very interesting, right? I'm a pastor. I have to pray first. But he said, do not pray. So I asked to Reverend Kim, why? He said, he invited, he asked to be a missionary to many people. And they said, uh, let me pray first. Then never come to Africa. So don't pray. So I asked to Reverend Makim, what do you want from me? He said, I want to know your decision, your will. If you want to be a missionary, uh, go Korea, return back Korea and prepare to come. It is not God's will. God will stop your way to come Africa. I was thinking a few minutes, uh, his word is right. So, after five minutes, I said to him, Okay, I will be a missionary to Africa. It's very easy to be a missionary, just five minutes of thinking. That's all. That night, I got a uh, message, a text from my wife. She sent me one line of message. Did you see a cloud? It comes from uh, First King chapter 18, the prayer of Elijah. Okay, he prayed and he showed very small piece of cloud after that. But uh, I read this text. I replied to my wife, I come here to see the cloud. But now I am in the lane, heavy lane. He knew my will. And she cried today and tonight in Korea. So that time I asked to Reverend Makim, okay, I decide to be a missionary, but pray for my wife. She is a professor of Christian University. It is very difficult to be a professor. I, I know how she study and she get a professorship. 
it's very hard work. So I cannot say to her, please resign from the professorship. Now I have to go to Africa as a missionary. You must join me. I cannot say to her as a man and as a husband. So pray for her. And he said to me, okay, I'll pray. But I just uh, landed and I met my wife in the Incheon International A Airport and she decided already to be a missionary. So everything okay? So I just packed and I uh, came to Africa as a missionary. This is my story. Until today, I think about myself, I am not a missionary. I just decide to serve the Lord in Africa as a God's servant, that's all. But my wife, Mrs. Park, she was called by God as missionary. So I think myself, I was a forerunner of my wife. Now I'm preparing everything for her. So I send her to find some Bible college because I promise uh, with uh, Reverend Dr. Jeffrey Koo, I am working with all the graduates from Firestone Bible College. Same mind, same spirit, and same ability. So I send my wife. I don't know if she is graduating this year, this semester. That's okay. It's impossible. She can take one more semester, one more year. Anyway, she have to graduate from this Bible college because I believe Fison Bible College very faithful to the Word of God. Very easy to be a missionary. But the other things just depend on God. God will guide you. God will protect you. God will use you mightily in mission field. And now the Bible Presbyterian Church in USA, they are, they want to return back to, uh, Orthodox Presbyterian Church. So now they have uh, some fellowship and even the synod of BP Church in USA, they decide to allow to the people uh, having uh, smoking and drinking alcohol. They say this is not seen anymore in BP Church. You, if you want, you can enjoy. We will not condemn you. They decided. The pastor said to me, I personally do not agree with them. But the younger generations, they want to make this. This is the BP Church in USA. Now, BP Church in Korea and Africa. Yes, in Korea we had the BP Church. But now no more BP churches and we had the Bible College, the Faith Theological Seminary in Korea. Uh, Reverend Mark Kim and my father-in-law, they graduated this Faith Theological Seminary in Korea, uh, established by the missionary from IBPFM. But now all this appeared. No more BP church, no more Bible College disappeared. But now, by Koreans, Bible Presbyterian Church in Africa, also Bible College of East Africa, we have the same spirit and we have the same doctrine with uh, Carl McIntyre, with the faith, old faith theological seminary. Of course, in USA, now there is a Bible uh, seminary, theological seminary, same name, faith theological seminary. But this seminary is not the old faith theological seminary. This is new uh, theological, sem faith theological seminary. 
the president, uh, he is not bad, but the other lecturers has some problems. Okay. So I recommend you don't go to Faith Theological Seminary. Bible College of East Africa and BP Church in Africa. We have some BP churches by the graduate of uh, Bible College of East Africa. The BP Spirit is still uh, alive in Africa and BP churches and Bible College. Pray for the African ministry. We call this Bible College movement. All the faculty comes from Firestone Bible College. Okay. And last, uh, let us talk about Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore, found by uh, Reverend Dr. Timothy To. How about the BP Church in Singapore? Is still okay? Uh, from Wikipedia, I got some, uh, okay. Uh, Reverend Dr. Timothy To, the founding pastor of the BP Church in Singapore, studied at Faith Theological Seminary, which was established by leaders of the Bible Presbyterian Church, USA, Reformed and Premillennial in the Old Princeton tradition. When the challenge to join the 20th century reformation was given by Dr. McIntyre to Faith Theological Seminary students, the founding pastor of the BB Church in Singapore, Timothy Toll, he felt God's call to join the movement. A fire with the crusading zeal to defend the faith, he wrote Elder Quack Cook Chang, then of the tortue speaking mother church at Princess Street to join the ICCC. So they agreed and later they invited Reverend Dr. Timothy To for English worship service. Uh, the Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore had good beginning in her inception. How about today the BB Church in Singapore? They divide several parts. They had all different concepts of theology, different mindset. Okay? Let's say Wikipedia says on the Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore, the Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore was founded in 1950 by Reverend Dr. Timothy To. It is essentially divided into two factions. One group of churches subscribe to the fundamentalist stance of the founder. Which part? Which parties? The, our parties, okay, the Faisal Bible College and Tulai BP Church and Calvary Pandan and Tabernacle and the other, uh, BP Church. Still fundamentally stands of the founders. The other considers itself to be evangelical. This later group of churches is denounced by the former to be neo-evangelical or liberal and are often called the new BPs because of different interpretation on the doctrine of biblical separation. They are not doing the biblical separation anymore. They do, don't want to fight against the error and modernism and new evangelicalism. Now they became the new evangelical and even liberals. Some pastors of these parties, they accept the criticism by liberals. It's not just new evangelicals. Okay. 
The Evangelical branch of Bible Presbyterian churches embrace the fellowship of any church and any seminary that professes Evangelical Protestant Christianity and extends cooperation with parachurch organizations like Campus Crusade for Christ International. Thus, many aspiring ministers prepare an evangelical seminar such as Fuller Theological Seminary and Singapore Bible College, Trinity Theological Seminary, Singapore. It's quite liberal Bible college and, tri and University of Nottingham over the BP's own seminary. Far Eastern Bible College, which is fundamentalist. Okay? So we have to pray for the Far Eastern Bible College. Conclusion. Where is the Bible Presbyterian Church in Singapore going? What is the future of the BP Church? Please know well the history of the BP Church. Learn from the mistake from our ancestor for father in faith. They said they loved the word of God, they loved God, but they failed to keep their faith. They said, I'm a fundamentalist. And I believe all the fundamental doctrines in the Bible, but they fail to keep the church of Christ pure. Why? Because of long mindset, new evangelical mindset, open-minded, never do biblical separation. They open the gate for the enemy of Jesus Christ to enter into the church. Honestly, content for the faith. And I encourage you, what should you do in your present and future ministry as a fundamentalist for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ? How can we survive this time? Worldly thought and the, all the doctrine of modernism comes into the church. How can we protect our next generation? And how can we survive? How can we be saved? from this kind of worldly streams. So this is the benefit from studying history. Learn from failure.